and not go into those areas. After the machines leave the uh, final bake oven, they travel along the conveyor to the decal area where Dick Guider applies the decals. Now you're watching the actual application of uh, the decals onto the machine. You'll notice he starts the decal on and then he squeegees them out. The purpose for the squeegee is to get the air bubbles out of the decal as he's applying them. If you tried to smooth them down with your finger, uh, there'd be lots of air bubbles in the, in the decal itself. What happens here is we open a bag like this and we dump it in the hopper. Now this is one of the few points where we actually have product open and exposed to the air. So we need to exercise extreme caution. Besides contamination from microorganisms, we need to be on the lookout for paper, tools, clothes, or anything else that could get in here. That means no jewelry or wristwatches are allowed in the plant. The only exception is a wedding ring. And whenever you work up here, you'll always wear one of these dust masks. Not only does it protect the product from your germs, but it also protects you from the dust in the air. This is the wet mix area, where the product just dumped gets mixed with water and hydrated. This processing tank is where the mixing takes place. From here on, it's a closed system, so the danger of product contamination is much less. But we have to make sure that the inside of the tank is absolutely clean, that the lid is closed, we check the temperature, and we add any chemicals if necessary. And if you're going to be handling chemicals like liquid enzymes, always wear one of these face masks. Careful coming down the stairs. When you use the stairs, always use both hands on the safety rail. From these tanks, the hydrated product goes around to these holding tanks here, where it waits till it goes onto the drying area. Microorganisms live everywhere, in the air, water, and soil, on our furniture and clothes, and in our bodies. They live in the digestive tract of all mammals, including man, and enable us to convert food into energy. They play a similar role in plants, allowing them to convert sunlight into energy. In fact, without microorganisms, all plants and animals, including man, would die. And though they are invisible to us, the mass of all the world's microorganisms would far outweigh all the other living things on Earth combined. Most microorganisms cannot harm man, and some even help us. But some can make us ill or even kill us. One way harmful microorganisms can enter our bodies is if we eat food that has those microorganisms in it. When food that is safe to eat becomes unsafe due to harmful microorganisms, we say the food has been contaminated. Generally, scientists divide microorganisms into six categories, bacteria, yeasts, molds, protozoa, algae, and viruses. Only the first three are common sources of food contamination. Bacteria, like all living things, grow, reproduce, and respond to their environment. One reason that harmful bacteria are such a threat is that they grow, reproduce, and respond so quickly and easily. Imagine a small glass of milk with 100 bacteria present. Typically, bacteria need only 40 minutes to grow to maturity and reproduce. Each of the 100 bacteria create 100 new bacteria. Then, 40 minutes later, each of the 200 bacteria create 200 new bacteria. The process continues until after 10 hours, we have 100 billion bacteria. A little moisture, food, and warmth is all most bacteria need to grow and reproduce. Some bacteria even have the ability to respond to unfavorable conditions by becoming dormant or hibernating until conditions favorable for growth arise. These bacteria are called spore formers because they create spores or shells in which they can lay dormant for months and then come back to life. If a person or animal ingests some harmful bacteria, there are several factors which determine whether or not they'll become ill. 
These factors include their age, their body's ability to fight off infection, and the amount of bacteria consumed. Sometimes an organism will become infected with harmful bacteria but will not show any signs of illness. Such a person or animal is called a symptomless carrier because they carry the bacteria inside them but there are no signs of any illness. Of course, there's no reason to be afraid of the liquid iron, but you've got to use good care and judgment at all times. This is the second of the six departments, the core room. The core is placed inside of the sand mold and then the iron is poured into the mold and forms around the core. The core gives the mold exactly the right shape. If the core is defective, the casting will be defective too. The process of creating a casting starts with the making of the pattern, a model of the finished casting. The pattern is used to make a mold of the outside surface of the casting. Then the core is inserted into the mold to shape the inside surface of the casting. Scrap iron, coke, pig iron and limestone are melted in the cupola and then released into a holding furnace. From the furnace, the molten metal is poured into a ladle and transported to the pouring deck, where it's poured into the mold. When the casting cools and the two halves of the mold are removed, a grinder is used to remove any excess metal. Finally, the casting is cleaned, inspected, packed, and shipped. Hi, my name is Randy Sergisgitter, and I'm the general manager of the John Deere Tumble Works, where we design and build the world's best hay and forage equipment. On behalf of all of our employees and myself, I'd like to welcome you to San Antonio and to the Atumbo Works. We're very happy to have you with us here today. First, a little history on our factory. Last year, the Atumbo Works celebrated 100 years, a century, in the hay and forage business. 101 years ago, a fellow named Joe Dane built a new facility in Atumbo, Iowa to produce his time and labor saving hay harvesting inventions. In 1911, John Deere purchased our factory from Mr. Dane. Since that time, the Atumbo Works has developed into a world-class producer of hay and forage products, helping John Deere become the world's largest machinery and implement manufacturer. Today, the Atumbo Works has over 800 employees focused on designing and